Inflammatory bowel disease or IBD is a chronic idiopathic inflammatory disease of the gastrointestinal tract. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are the two major types of IBD. These diseases affect millions of people worldwide nowadays. IBD is a familial disease in 5 to 10 percent of patients and the strongest risk factor for the development of IBD is a first degree relative with the disease. The greatest incidence of IBD is among white and Jewish people, but the incidence of IBD in Latinx and Asian people is increasing. Urban areas have a higher prevalence of IBD than rural areas, and high socioeconomic classes have a higher prevalence than lower socioeconomic classes. Smoking is an important risk factor in IBD with opposite effects on ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Smoking increases the risk of Crohn's disease while it has a protective effect of patients with ulcerative colitis. Previous appendectomy with confirmed appendicitis, particularly at a young age, has a protective effect on the development of ulcerative colitis. Infectious gastroenteritis with pathogens like Salmonella and Shigella increases IBD risk. Diets high in animal protein, sugars, sweets, oils, fish and shellfish, and dietary fat, especially omega-6 fatty acids and low in omega-3 fatty acids, have been implicated in increasing the risk of IBD. A protective effect of vitamin D on the risk of Crohn disease has been reported. In both diseases, inflammation likely emerged from the genetic predisposition of the host in the context of yet-to-be-defined environmental factors. Ulcerative colitis is a mucosal disease that usually involves the rectum and extends proximally to involve all or part of the colon. About 40-50% to 50 of patients have disease limited to the rectum and rectosigmoid. 30-40% to 40 have disease extending beyond the sigmoid but not involving the whole colon. And 20% have a pancolitis, means all the colon is affected. Crohn's disease can affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract, from the mouth to the anus. 30 to 40 percent of patients have a small bowel disease alone. 40 to 55 percent have disease involving both the small and large intestines, and 15 to 25 have colitis alone. Unlike ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease is a transmural process. The major symptoms of ulcerative colitis are diarrhea, rectal bleeding, tenesmus, passage of mucus, and crampy abdominal pain. The severity of symptoms correlates with the extent of disease. Although ulcerative colitis can present acutely, symptoms usually have been present for weeks to months. Patients with proctitis usually pass fresh blood or blood-stained mucus either mixed with a stool or streaked onto the surface of a normal or hard stool. They also have tenesmus or urgency with a feeling of incomplete evacuation, but rarely have abdominal pain. When the disease extends beyond the rectum, blood is usually mixed with a stool or grossly bloody diarrhea may be noted. Active disease can be associated with a rise in acute phase reactants, or C-reactive protein, platelet count, an erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR, and a decrease in hemoglobin. Both fecal lactoferrin and calprotectin are becoming an integral part of IBD management and are used frequently to rule out active inflammation versus symptoms of irritable bowel or bacterial overgrowth. In severely ill patients, the serum albumin level will fall rather quickly. Leukocytosis may be present, but is not a specific indicator of disease activity. Proctitis or proctosigmoiditis rarely causes a rise in CRP. Sulfasalazine is effective treatment for mild to moderate ulcerative colitis, but its high rate of side effects limits its use. Up to 30% of patients experience allergic reactions or intolerable side effects such as headache, anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. The majority of patients with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis 
benefit from oral or parenteral glucocorticoids. Prednisone is usually started for active ulcerative colitis that is unresponsive to sulfasalazine therapy. Antibiotics have no role in the treatment of active or quiescent ulcerative colitis. Other treatments like azathioprine, mercaptopurine, methotrexate, and biologic medications may be used in moderate to severe form of the disease or when it is not responsive to other treatments. Nearly one half of patients with extensive chronic ulcerative colitis undergo surgery within the first 10 years of their illness. Because ulcerative colitis is a mucosal disease, the rectal mucosa can be dissected and removed down to the anus.